I'm Stephen Rafferty, and I'm a stand-up comedian, YouTuber, world record holder, author, and podcaster. And this is Untitled Interviews, the interview show where I interview local artists, musicians, and entertainers. And today I have an extremely talented musician by the name of Thomas Waring. And always remember, you can always join the conversation on Twitter using the hashtag Untitled Interviews. So hi, Tom. How you doing? Good, man. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Now, let me start with your history because I did some research. You come from musical greatness. Your grandfather, Fred Waring, worked with Frank Sinatra, a musical icon. And I want to know, did your grandfather play an influence in going into the music business? Or to further answer the question, how did this all start for you? Well, yeah, of course. It plays an impact on the decisions I make because I realize it's more than just the ideas that I come up with, or the um, the paths that I want to take. It's something that is sort of a pressure, but a pressure that you want to feel. You know, to feel like you could line up to people's expectations and perform for people's expectations. It couldn't get better than that. Now, is there a greater pressure to achieve that greatness because of that musical history? No, I wouldn't say so. I feel like my entire life, you know, in certain ways, there's been pressure, and at a certain point, you start to um, look at pressure as something different than what you originally thought it as. Mm -hmm. So you begin to learn how to take it and make it sort of your own weapon, or take it and for some people, you know, a weapon that takes you out yourself, you know. Past or present, who are your musical influences that you look up for inspiration? For inspiration? I'm very heavily uh, into Jeff Buckley. He he has a really great combination of uh, musical aptitude and as well the ability to write at a high level. So and not just writing lyrics, but write as in structuring a, a theme to whatever he's you know creating. Um, so he's very influential. Bob Dylan is someone else who I love because of his writing abilities. He sort of just always creates a story out of something. And um, so those are two people I really admire, two people I look up to a lot, and um, big influences for me. What are you trying to gain by being a musician? Well, as a musician, I think the importance of being a musician, as some people say, music is life, life is music. Well, I think in my own music, I'd love to be able to play the same impact that some artists did for me, for example. There are artists that I'll listen to albums, and those albums, now that I listen to them, bring me back to that time period. I'd love to be able to do that for someone else down the road. And tell a story. I mean, what else are you doing in life if you're not sharing art and you're not telling a story of what you've done in your life? Otherwise, no one would know anything about the world if people didn't tell stories. Everyone would just be on their own little path. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's interesting. What are your future goals? My future goals are, most importantly, I'd love to um, move my music in a direction where it can be applicable for everyone. So everyone wants to listen to it. Everyone wants to hear the story. Everyone enjoys listening to it. And I'm not asking to be a guy that everyone listens to all day in their car, but... You know, if someone has two or three songs that they love, two or three stories that, you know, they can relate to or feel mm -hmm. deeply about, I'd love to be, you know, in someone's iPod in another way, you know? Don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> what was it like performing your first set in front of a live audience? Because there's a lot of people who have never performed nor never performed in front of a bunch of people, you know? Explain to people who have never performed, what is it like? So my first live set, that was actually a big set for me because I'd done smaller things, but they were never really a live set, so playing numerous songs. Um, I played at Art Basel in 2013, and um, it was uh, for La Haim, uh Vodka, and um, it was a great experience. I got to see what feedback was. You know, it was the first time that I'd actually gone on stage, and when I finished, people would come up to me and talk to me, and... It was like a taste into the future, possibly, of what, you know, my musical career could be if I take it in a certain direction, yeah. So, um, I really enjoyed doing that, and um, 
in the beginning, you obviously get nervous. You know, you feel shaky. Right. You know, your mouth's dry. Your throat closes up. But by the end, you're just moving with the energy of the people watching you and enjoying it themselves. You know? Definitely. Definitely. Um, you have a new album. It's coming out very soon called Amour. And I want to know what the basis of this album is and what is the inspiration towards creating that album? Okay. Well, it's basically... It's a theme of a story of two people. Mm-hmm. So it's two people that really um, enjoy each other, they're people that love each other, but at the same time, there's so much uh, depth in the relationship. And by that, I mean, there's the fluctuations of emotions that go up and down. So it chronicles, you know, from beginning to end, this relationship, but the ins and outs of everything. And each song, you know, presents a different chapter in that story. Wow. Very cool. And uh, my last question is for up-and-coming artists. What is one piece of advice you would tell for up-and-coming artists? Well, the first thing I would recommend in a sense or uh, advise them to do is to focus on getting their craft done. And the second thing is getting as much feedback as possible, playing live as much as possible, learning how to have a presence, learning how to get out there, learning how to, you know, move with the crowd in a sense and understand how it works. Because you could, you know, spend six years writing and then go up on stage and because you're nervous, your song sounds like crap. So you really have to be able to get out there and produce and execute in multiple ways that turn out to be one way. The result. It's very, very cool. Yeah, thank you. And I want to know, where can we find you? Well, it'll be on iTunes, it'll be on Spotify, iHeartRadio. If you go to Ta Records on Facebook, if you like them, you can definitely see all the updates on where it's going to be at. Um, you can follow me at T-Wearing Music on um, Twitter, and you can check that out as well. And there you get all the updates, you get all the information on whatever's going to happen, what's going to come out, the timing of everything. And, um, and you'll hear stuff about a possible next project, and what's ahead for me in the next year. So it's a great uh, platform for me to be able to uh, reach the fans and possibly new fans. Well, that's very that's very awesome, and you're going to be doing some great things. So I wanted to thank you, Tom, for being a part of Untitled Interviews, and it's a pleasure having you. Of course, man. Of course. And uh, stay tuned because you're going to hear some live awesome music from the man, Thomas Waring. So stay tuned and check it out.